existence. When they took that Roman cat of nine tails, you know what that is, right? It was a club with long leather lashes, strings. Inside each one of those leather straps was nails, glass. And when a Roman struck that body, it wrapped around the body. And when they yanked it, all the flesh came off. When they did that, to, see these pictures and calendars don't do justice. Jesus on the cross was a bloody mess. When they took that off, his skin come off. You could see his organs, his insides, everything. Wounded for us. <laughs> and yet, they, why, when you look at something like that, yet people still say no to Jesus. I don't get it. I don't get it. His clothes, totally wrapped. He could, Jesus could not move whatsoever. God's Son should have had the best clothes and place, the best place to stay that day. Well, you got to ask yourself the question, why did he go through this? Why was he born this way? Gives new meaning to Hebrews 4.15. Turn over there a minute. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. And I want you to notice verse 15. Well, in verse 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that's Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, that's after his resurrection, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Watch this. For we do not have a high priest, that's Jesus, who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Did you catch that? But was all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Gives new meaning to that, doesn't it? You see, he suffered all that so that he could sympathize with us. He didn't have to. So, whatever you go through in life, people, Jesus went through the same thing. Only when he went through it, it was total victory. That's why we go to him. The Bible says, cast all your care upon him, for he what? Cares for you. He cares for us. Listen, didn't have the best of beds, didn't have the best of clothes. See, that's what the Christmas story is all about. <laughs> but notice the proclamation. This is cool in verse 8 through 10. Notice the proclamation. Notice the activity in, ver in verse number 8. All of a sudden, there's shepherds watching. The shepherds are watching. The shepherds were guarding the sheep at night, the Bible says, right? They were guarding the sheep at night. They, in other words, they were making a living, earning their wages as shepherds. They had sole custody of caring for the sheep. Amen? Well, I don't think that's no coincidence. Jesus would be our Passover lamb. Amen? Amen? He's our Passover lamb. His life would sacrifice his life for my sins and for your sins. John chapter 1 verse 29. When John the Baptist was preaching, all of a sudden Jesus come on the scene. And what does he say? Behold, the Lamb of God that what? Taketh away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God. Shepherds took care of lamb. This is no coincidence. Jesus is our lamb, sacrificed for you and me. I love 1 Peter. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter, I want you to notice chapter 1. And I want you to notice verse 19. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 19. The Bible says, But with the precious blood of Christ of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus is the perfect Son of God, the Lamb of God that took away our sin. Amen? No coincidence. There were shepherds. Jesus is our great shepherd. He's our great lamb. He's the shepherd of the sheep. Amen? Notice the announcement in verse 9 and 10. The announcement was, number one, was shocking. The announcement was shocking. Picture this. The shepherds are guarding the sheep at night. Right? It's calm. It's dark. It's usually dark at night. And so they're just casually watching the sheep, the sheep, checking every now. Yeah, everything's okay. Yeah, everything's quiet. Boom! Bam! All of a sudden, angels come out of nowhere. 
and the whole entire place where they're shepherding is totally in light. The angels lighted up that whole sky. They lighted up the entire place. God's glory came down from heaven and showed the whole shepherds, hey, the Son of God is going to be born. That's a shocker. Can you imagine total brightness? Angels out of the sky? you got to remember, it's been silent for over 400 years. God has not spoke to his people, and there's been no prophet for over 400 years. And all of a sudden, these poor shepherds, they're just all of a sudden, they may be talking to each other and probably joking around, and all of a sudden, boom! The angels come out and say that Jesus Christ is going to be born. That was a shock to them. Besides, uh, you're going to go into down and say, hey, guess what? Angels uh, talk to me today. They're going to think, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, right, angels talk to you. Yeah, see you on the seventh floor. You know? I mean, they, they had to be shocked. What happened here, people? God's glory illuminated the whole sky that night. We don't have time today, but Exodus chapter 24, verse 17. Exodus chapter 24, verse 17. And Psalm 19.1 talks about God specializes in opening up the heavens and showing the glory of God. See, it was shocking, that announcement. But also, it was scary. In verse 10, it was scary. When the angels spoke, it brought fear, the Bible says, to their soul. Well, I think I'd be scared, too. They not only saw the angels, but they began to speak to them. I'd say, oh, my goodness. I'd be thinking, what did I do? You know, people, when angels come on the scene, either two things happen. You study the Bible. Two things happen when angels appear. One, there's blessing coming, or two, judgment's coming. No, that's the only two times they appear. Either blessing or judgment. Well, this was a blessing. But they were scared. When they spoke, they, they, they were terrified, the Bible says. In other words, it was a moment of intensity here. Though this was needless fear, they had nothing to fear, people. They had nothing to fear. This was a great announcement. But you know, I got to thinking about that. I believe the world needs a good taste of godly fear to wake them up today. You know why the world acts like they do? You know why bad things happen? The Bible says there's no fear of God. No fear. That's why people act like they do. No fear of God in their life. I'm going to tell you something. You better fear God. Because saved or unsaved, one day you're going to stand before Him and give an account every word and every deed you've done. You better fear Him. Even God's own people, the Jews, feared Him. Remember when they went to the mount and Moses came down? And God said to those people, You touch that mountain. You're dead meat. And when they heard the thunder and the lightning, when they heard God's voice, those people feared and trembled. And it took Moses to calm them down. The Bible says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. If America doesn't wake up if the church of God does not wake up, you're going to see the hand of God come down on this country. Because right now, this country has no fear of God whatsoever. They're taking God out of the schools. They're taking God out of the government. They're taking Christmas out. And by the way, do not buy the new silver dollar coming out. 
There's a new